Do you know that if you invested $2,200 in Apple stock when they went public in 1980, that it would be worth $3.4 million today? Let's take a look. $22 a share at that time when they went pro uh, portfolio, when they went public. We hit the run button. And there you go, 3.4 million, not bad. Now I got your attention, thanks for watching this video, and I hope that this, is, this tool helps you with your investing strategy. If we only knew, right? But the fact is that there are companies trading publicly today that may be the next Apple, Google, or Amazon. And that's why financial analysts perform backtesting to study trends and look for companies that follow similar trends. I spent a good chunk of my career in the financial industry working in IT. While working at one of those companies, I worked on a project that developed a backtesting portfolio system. I had some spare time one weekend. I decided to see if I can recreate part of that project using Google Sheets. Google Sheets is very powerful and provides lots of ways to interact with the internet. The result is this backtesting spreadsheet that I'm showing today. So what is backtesting? Backtesting determines the viability of a trading strategy by discovering how it would play out using historical data. Backtesting is considered to be an important tool in a trader's toolbox. Without backtesting, traders wouldn't even think of risking money in financial markets. Think about it. Before you buy anything, be it a phone, a car, you'd want to check out the history of the brand, its features, etc. You check if it's worth your money. The same principle applies to trading and backtesting helps you with it. The backtesting tool uses historical pricing and splits from Yahoo Finance and shows you what the current value of the stock is based on your investment. Let's take a look over at Yahoo Finance, if you might have already be familiar with it. There's many um, sites like this, but Yahoo um, makes the data available. So we'll come over here and type in a quote. We'll type in Apple. And go ahead and search. And there we go. We got Apple Inc. And from here, we can look at historical data. And with historical data, you could get historical prices. You also could get historical stock splits. You set your date range. And then you would click the download to get the CSV file. And if I right click on that, we can copy that link. And we'll copy it right over to our spreadsheet over here. We'll just pick any cell for now. I'll just paste it in as text. It's quite a long query, but it's important um, when you're uh, writing a tool like this, you got to understand the query so you can build the query uh, to return the results. Um, but basically, you can see the symbol right there, AAPL. The period one is the beginning period. Period two is the ending period. They don't look like much like dates. That's actually Unix timestamps, uh, which they changed. Um, originally, when I was doing this project with that uh, financial company, they used a whole different um, uh, URL. So, I mean, it's their site. It's free. They can change it at will. So one day, this tool may need some tweaking, um, but it's easy enough to find out what those are uh, just the way we did there. Let me erase that. Alrighty, so um, the back testing tool um, I do download um, once you hit this run button. I download both the historical prices for the dates starting uh, when you, you purchased, and, and use the the last trading day. And also I download the splits and then apply them so that the number you see here is uh, split adjusted. All right, Google uses App Script under the hood for their Google Docs suite of tools like Sheets, Docs, Forms, etc. And App Script is based on JavaScript. I've shared this spreadsheet so anybody with the link can view. Please make a copy of the spreadsheet for your own drive so you can make changes and run the script. Uh, the spreadsheet will also include the App Script. The script is beyond the scope of this video, but feel free to study it if you like by selecting the Sheets Extensions menu followed by App Script. And you don't need to even know anything about this to be able to use this tool. So if you're not into JavaScript or App Script, not a big deal. We'll just close that. Um, 
a little extra in here that I threw in is um, a little handy sheet sizer. And that's on this little new menu here called Extras. And I'm not sure if you know, but the maximum number of cells in Google Sheets is 10 million, which was recently increased. It used to be 5 million. But if we run this handy tool, we can find out how close we are to that limit. And since we have over 20,000 instruments um, in, in the sheet, um, I just wanted to make sure we were good. So it shows each sheet by itself. And at the very end, it says that we've only used 12.8% of our 10 million cell limit. So plenty of room to add more instruments if we choose. That's just a freebie that comes along with it. Alrighty, so um, the first time you run a script, you have to allow it to run. And you may already have experience with this, but the first time you run it, it actually doesn't run. It just uh, walks you through a process of allowing it, in which case you'll have to press the run button a second time. And watch, if I make this a fresh sheet for myself, I can just make a copy. And when I go to run, it's now going to ask me to allow it since I have um, have not run the script with this spreadsheet, even though it's a copy. It's a totally different spreadsheet. And I'll wait for it to fully load. I'll know when it's fully load when I see my extras um, uh, menu pop up on top, which has that uh, handy dandy sheet sizer. Should be coming up any second. There we go, Google, thank you. And now if I hit the run button, you'll see what I meant. It needs our permission. There's about four steps we have to go through. We have to select your Gmail ID. We have to go to advanced now. And then um, it's, um, asking us if we go to back safe, back testing, which is the spreadsheet, even though they say it's unsafe, we're gonna say it's okay, it's mine, I know it's safe. Finally, one more step, allow. And it'll be a one-time thing. It wouldn't have run though, you would have to run it again to prove it. I'll just change my shares purchase to 200 and hit the run button now, and you'll see that um, it won't be 3.4 million anymore. Oh, 6.8 million. Uh, if I only knew, right? Um, but quite honestly, to tell you the truth, I know me, if I had that money in Apple and it was making money, I would have pulled it out. I wouldn't have waited. Um, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and send this to my trash. And we'll get back to our sheet here. All righty. Um, so the stock symbols are from a company called EOD Data and that you can get the symbols for free. They offer other things as well, of course, for um, a price, but it's easy to get the, the symbols from there. I've updated the symbols, um, I think it was on the 17th of February, 2023. Just to be fresh, symbols change, companies change symbols, uh, companies go out of business, new companies come into the picture. So every now and then you may wanna refresh those symbols. Um, so, um, I do have a link to that uh, website um, in the description as well. I'm including the New York Stock Exchange, uh, NASDAQ, Amex, and the OTC markets. And combine, I roll them all up together in this one sheet here called tab. All in all, there's, oh, I'd said about 20, it looks like 21,000 instruments. And how do I roll them together? There's lots of ways to do it, but the way I have it set up now, it's automatic. So if you do refresh any of those four tabs, um, it will automatically update this tab. And this is again, um, beyond the scope of this video, but I'm gonna show you the formula anyway. It's right up here. It's using uh, Google Arrays and a user um, named function that I wrote called get last row. You also get that uh, name function in the spreadsheet. Handy little spreadsheet, uh, handy little function uh, determines the last row of a range. So um, that allows me to, uh, could basically what we're doing here is concatenating those four sheets. If you decided to bring the Chicago exchange or any of those other exchanges, you could just mimic what I've already done and I'm sure that you could figure it out. Even if you don't fully understand it, that's fine. But I'm sure you can just um, follow along and just make it work um, as well. If you have questions, you can always uh, drop me a note in the comment box. Alrighty, so um, 
if you are interested in name functions, I did do a deep dive video into that. I'm also linking that in the description below. Um, and also I did a video on dynamically combining sheets, which is what we did with this formula. That's also linked below, not necessary, but if you are interested in learning about that, if you have a little geek side in you like me, uh, then by all means, they're there for you to check out. Alrighty, so in addition to showing, um, let's get back to that main page. Uh, the current value of a stock, um, well, let's try another one. I haven't done this one in a while. Let's see. What if we purchased Google and they went public in 2004, it looks like. So 20. Now you can put in any date. I'm just putting in IPO dates. Well, any date since they were trading, I should say. And they went at 85. So at 85, I have or doubt I would have 100. That would be 8,500. Let's say I bought 50 shares at uh, $85. And we'll hit the run button. So the total investment was $4,250. And, oh, mistyped the symbol. Nobody caught me. Nobody told me about that. Oops. Well, we do check. That was not planned. <laughs> Upper lowercase doesn't make a difference, by the way. Um, but I just like to make it look right. So now uh, we'll go ahead and hit the run button. Now that we got the right symbol. And 189000 dollars No. Something is wrong with that. Wait a second. Uh, I don't know. Could it be? I don't know. Let's see. Let's try. Um, let's try Qual no, Qualcomm. They they weren't doing so good either. After a while, let's try. Um, I don't recall when Dell went public, but uh, let's go for Microsoft. And they went public in three fourteen. 1986 and they were at 21 so let's say we bought 100 shares at 21 that's 2100 and we'll hit the run button oh i know what happened with google uh-huh they changed their company name to alphabet remember so google's not the long the no longer the um the main symbol um i don't know if i know that one but we can look it up let's see uh, so we can go to back to where's our quote lookup and what if we type in Google what does it show us alphabet Inc and is Google one hmm not sure now trading at 94.59 um, I already ran Microsoft. So anyway, Microsoft investment of um, 2100 looks like 7.4 million. Uh, so I'm pretty sure the data is good. It's just something um, in the history of Google and their um, change of somewhat recent years that is causing the history um, to be a little bit uh, wonky. Anyway, so um, in addition to showing the, the stock value from your investment, I create a little summary page over here and the summary page gives you basically a 10 year um, annual uh, return as well as a, a compound 10 year return down below one year, five year and 10 year, assuming the instrument's been trading for 10 years or you requested data for at least 10 years or five years. Um, the formulas for this are pretty straightforward, and I included a tab here called Summary Formulas, formulas which shows you how to do it if you were using standard Google Sheet formulas. So for instance, that one there is basically the end value minus beginning value divided by the end value, and that's the same for all of these. And for the compound um, annual return calculation, that's this over here. It's the ending value over the beginning value raised to the power one over the number of years minus one. So in this case, we have the end value C11 and the beginning value is uh, B11. And that's raised to the power of one to the power uh, over one because that's the number of years minus one and that better be the same number as this number which it is and this one for five years 
will be C11 over B7, the ending value five years back, one, two, three, four, five. And that will be divided by, I uh, raise the power of one um, over five for five years. And the last one would be um, B C11 over B2 for 10 years and one over 10. So just some little handy uh, formulas, maybe you're already aware of them. But in any event, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. And I hope that you can use this tool for your investing strategies. And please like and comment below.